will join to sing in our gathering music. You can stay seated while we sing this first one. Good morning, everyone. Welcome in the name of Christ. It is a gift to be with all of you this morning, gathered by the Holy Spirit for worship and praise. And I invite all of us to share in welcoming one another this morning. I invite you to turn to those right around you. Introduce yourself if you're next to someone new and share some words of greeting. Some of you were greeted by the smell of smoke as you came in today because there's a fire going in the pizza oven, and we hope that you all will stay after worship to enjoy pizza and learning about the People's Climate and Equity Plan. For those of you who are joining us online this morning, you'll need a worship folder to fully engage in worship this morning, and you can find that on our website or in the email that you received this morning to get to YouTube. There should be a link to the worship folder there. And also, we'll be sharing in Holy Communion this morning, the meal where Jesus meets us and nourishes us. And you'll need bread and wine or crackers and juice or whatever nourishment you have on hand as we share in our holy meal together. There are a few additions to our prayers. First, a prayer of great thanksgiving. Um, Eleanor over here is now a big sister. <laughs> Rebecca and Chang welcomed, you're a big sister too, Sadie, yes. Yes, Eleanor's baby brother, Sebastian Alexander Lau, was born on August 8th to Rebecca and Chang. And we celebrate this gift of new life. Also, we give thanks for the birthday of Marilyn Preuss. So Mary isn't here today because she is celebrating up north her mother's 90th birthday. We give thanks for her life of faith and love. And also we add to our prayers Pastor Ben. Pastor Ben was supposed to be here this morning, but unfortunately, while he was on vacation at Holden Village, he came down with COVID. And so today is his last day of isolation. So we'll hold him and 
I know others of you, too, are dealing with COVID in your lives. We'll hold you all in prayer. Also, I have some sad news to share with all of you. Some of you got to know Mandingo McKnight over the last several years as he came in and out of this community. And I learned last week that he died in June. And um, we will be having a memorial service for him this next Sunday at 2 p.m. So I invite those of you who would like to join me and Mendingo's family and friends as we honor his life and commend him to God. And now we continue our worship with a land acknowledgement. I invite you to rise as you're able in body or spirit. Dwelling in this present moment, feel the firmness of the ground beneath you. Notice around you what is green and growing. God calls us to worship on the traditional land of the Dakota people, today a home to neighbors of many indigenous nations. Let us honor their sacred connection to the family of creation expressed in Lakota as Mitakuye Oyasin. Let us grieve the terrible harms these peoples and this land have suffered at the hands of settlers. And let us, as followers of Jesus, join neighbors to repair such harm, trusting that the Spirit is making all things new. Now let us pray together. I invite you to echo each line. Loving God, help us to listen to your word. Send the fire of your love to disrupt us, to warm us, and to ready us to be your people. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back? Those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, they plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? This is the word of life. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the twelfth chapter. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? 
No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, and in-laws against one another. Jesus also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, It is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites! You know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the good news. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Some of you may know that in the front of our ELWs, our Cranberry Hymnals, there's a calendar of lesser festivals and commemorations. And listed in that calendar, it's on page 15 if you want to turn to it, are saints from across the centuries, from um, apostles of the early church to musicians like, welcome, from musicians like J.S. Bach to more contemporary prophets like Martin Luther King Jr. And to yesterday, August 13th, I learned, is the day that we commemorate Florence Nightingale. Florence Nightingale grew up in a wealthy British family in the 1800s, and she was fully expected to marry well and live a high society life. But she felt persistently called by God to live a life of service to others, and she resolved to become a nurse. When a prominent poet and a politician proposed to her after nine years of courtship, she said no. She did not want being a mother and a wife <laughs> to get in the way <laughs> of her holy calling. <laughs> so her family was horrified. They were devastated and they saw nursing as a low-class profession, but she did not let their expectations get in the way of her pursuing her call from God. And she became a pioneer in nursing. She served during the war in Crimea. She improved hospital standards. And she was called the Lady with the Lamp. Maybe some of you have seen uh, images of her holding a candle lamp in the dark halls of a hospital as she would make her rounds to visit wounded and ill soldiers. When I saw this image yesterday as I was learning about her life, I thought, there it is. There it is. A glimpse of that fire that Jesus is talking about in our gospel this morning. There it is, the fire that Jesus came to bring the fire of the spirit of truth and love, the fire of justice and mercy, the fire of faith in a mother, father, God, a God who makes us see in the faces of the wounded and the oppressed and the forgotten, our sibling in need of care. For Florence, this fire that God gave her, this fire of her calling, well, it singed her family system. It singed her mother and her father and her sister. Oh, this fire burned down, for Florence at least, the idols of wealth and motherhood and respectability. Jesus' teaching in Luke today suggests that the gospel may indeed singe us as well. The gospel may lead to division and discord in our own family systems. Watch out now. 
this fire of the Word of God is disruptive. And it is disruptive for the sake of a deeper peace of shalom that Jesus came to bring and proclaimed as he proclaimed the reign of God. Now, I did not read this passage about Jesus bringing division when I met with the Gerdas a few weeks ago to prepare them to bring their daughters to the font for baptism. But in a way, we very much touched on what Jesus was talking about here. Because we discussed how when parents bring their children for baptism, they are essentially saying, this child is not just mine or ours. This child is God's child. And that might sound just sweet and cliche a lot of the time, but actually, it's very radical. Truly, there is some letting go that parents do when they bring their child for baptism. There is a letting go of control. Your child becomes joined to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They become part of a family much broader than your own. They receive a call to love and service, to work for justice and peace, to be disruptors of the status quo and proclaimers of the reign of God. Last weekend, it was a gift to be up north at Wilderness Canoe Base with 40 others from our saviors. It was such a fabulous time of reconnection and fun and time in the beauty of God's creation. And while we were up north, I witnessed some of our children living out their callings, being disruptors of the status quo and proclaimers of the reign of God. I glimpsed some fire at work in them. On Saturday, as we were eating lunch together, one of the wilderness staff got up to share the schedule for the rest of the day. Two to four, there will be crafts and canoeing. 4.30 to 5.30, there's going to be sauna and swim. And then we'll have dinner. And then there'll be a campfire at 7.30. And she went to sit down, but one of our, our Savior's kids piped up, ahem, ahem, actually, actually, we have a change to the schedule. We are going to have a child-led Vespers service. It will be right after dinner in the outdoor chapel. So, when the time came, we walked across the bridge from Fishhook Island to Dominion Island, up to the chapel. The kids greeted us with hymnals out on all of the benches ready for us. They led the singing. They read a psalm. And then they served us wild blueberries that they picked, um, sharing, a, m a moment of sharing and nourishment that they called Blueberry Communion. <laughs> and as we walked up to the chapel, across that bridge and up to the chapel, another part of our Holy Scripture came to us, these visions that the prophet Isaiah has about what the reign of God looks like. A vision of people from all nations streaming across bridges to God's holy mountain, where there is no more war or strife or division, where weapons get turned into gardening tools, and we could imagine where pipelines get turned into playgrounds, a vision of wolves lying down with lambs, predators with their prey at peace, a vision of a little child leading them. Our experience of this child-led worship service was indeed a glimpse of the reign of God. And as Jesus reminds us today, the peace, the shalom, the wholeness and completeness that God desires and brings to this whole wounded world, it does not just come without tension. It is a long road to shalom. Our text from Luke today finds Jesus on the long road to Jerusalem. This road takes Jesus to the cross, where Jesus confronts in his very body the forces of evil and apathy, of sin and death that are allied against God. In the weakness and the scandal of his death by crucifixion and his resurrection from the dead, 
God shows us the truth, shining like a lamp in a dark hospital, the truth that nothing can truly divide us or separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And in the strength of God's love that brings life out of death, we find joy, communion, solidarity, and life, even in the midst of pain and division. May this love and grace from God give us good courage to continue on this journey to shalom. Our God will just keep stoking the fire in us, and you can smell it. You can smell a fire right now in our backyard. After church, you'll get to hear about the People's Climate and Equity Plan, and it's a plan put together by God's children of many different races and zip codes across Minneapolis. And it's a plan that says to leaders in Minneapolis who would like to uphold the status quo, who are content to allow environmental racism and racial inequities to persist in places like Phillips neighborhood and North Minneapolis that bear the cumulative burdens of pollution and disinvestment, it comes to say, ahem, actually, actually we need to change the schedule. We need to change our priorities. We need to co-create a city where everyone, where every beloved child of God lives in a healthy and resilient neighborhood as we continue to live in a time of climate crisis. So standing with our children and children yet to be, may the fire of God burn in us. May it burn away our apathy and our self-centeredness. May it burn bright with compassion and truth. May the hammer of God's word topple over idols that have made a home in us and in society. As we will sing together now in a hymn that the children selected for child-led worship, let the fires of your justice burn. Amen.
United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, let us pray for the whole world, trusting that God listens to the prayers we voice aloud or offer in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray for all that God has made and called good. For what in creation do we pray today? Let us pray for peace and justice next door and around the world. For what places and people do we pray today? For our neighborhoods, for Phillips. Let us pray for people coming together for the common good. For what organizations do we pray today? Let us pray for all in need of healing, comfort, help. For whom do we pray today? Anton, Monica, or Diane, all nations, Indian Church, and everyone in Phillips and beyond grieving the death of Marlene White Rabbit Helgamo, her Marky, her family, the family of Mandingo McKnight. all those sick with COVID-19, including Pastor Ben. In thanksgiving for the birth of Sebastian Alexander Lau. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of Christ's peace with one another.
And now is the time when we gather our gifts, gifts that God first gave us. The ushers will bring the noisy offering forward here. If you brought a noisy offering, you can bring that to the point. Also, they'll be bringing uh, plates around to those of you who are seated. And after that plate passes by you, we will all get in a big circle for Holy Communion. Those of you joining us online, now's the time for you to prepare your tables for Holy Communion. Repeat back what you hear. Let us drink together. In Jesus' presence now we meet and rest. In the presence of our Lord we gather. Now let us sing and dance our thanksgiving to God with this music that comes from our siblings of faith in Puerto Rico.
lo le lo la lo le lo le lo la lo le lo le lo la lo lo le lo le lo la le lo le lo la lo le lo le lo la lo le lo le lo la lo lo le lo le lo la Holy God we sing with joy for your goodness filling all creation spilling over in love we praise you for breaking the chains of slavery, for speaking words of teaching, for sending to us your beloved, Jesus Christ, who on the night when he was betrayed took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering Jesus, we come to this feast. Pour out upon us your spirit of love, O God, and unite us with all who share this heavenly food the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be glory and honor, justice and dancing, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Mother, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Those of you joining us online, hear these words addressed to you the body of Christ, given for you, the blood of Christ, shed for you. For those of you here in the sanctuary, servers will come around with bread. We also have gluten-free wafers available for those who need them. We have both wine and grape juice, and the grape juice pitcher has a gold ribbon around the handle. So please let your server know which you prefer. And also, once you have communed, you are welcome to return to your seats. And you also may sit. I know it's a long time to stand. If you need to sit at any point, wherever you are, you are in the circle and the servers will come to you. And I do need four adult server helpers. So would anybody like to serve communion today? Thank you, Rebecca. Think, is that Jamie? No? Oh, Cheryl. Great. David. Wonderful. One more. One more server. Rebecca, thank you. Thank you. Come to the Feast of Life.
join in singing Ubi Caritas. Ubi Caritas et Amor. Et Amor. Ubi Caritas. Ubi Caritas. Deus ibi est. Deus ibi est. Ubi Caritas. Et Amor. Ubi Caritas. Deus ibi est. Ubi Caritas. Oh!
Now receive this blessing. The body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Now, having been fed and nourished by our God, we are sent forth to serve and do justice. If you have an announcement to share with this community, now is the time. Come on up to the mic. I've already mentioned a couple of times, I hope people will stay after for our pizza party in the backyard, where you will get to learn about the People's Climate and Equity Plan and take action by writing postcards. Let's see, also I wanna share with you that a memorial service for Marky's sister, Karen, will be here at Our Saviors on Sunday, August 28th at 1 p.m. Come on up. Good morning, everybody. My name is Kathy Fury. Um, and um, we have a shelter meal coming up again. It'll be August 29th, which will be a Monday and we'll need uh, food and servers. And um, what I would really like is like a core team who would make it a, a priority um, on their calendar. The fifth Monday and the fifth, what? Saturday. <laughs> Thank you. Of every, um, of every month. So we don't do it every month. And um, to all the folks who've been helping in the past, thank you so much. We had a really good time uh, in July. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Rebecca, and I use pronouns like she and they. And uh, I am coming to you with my artist hat on. Um, as you know, we are kind of turning into a season of uh, creation care. Um, and we want to reflect that with some art. We have some ideas for a participatory art project and some bulletin art. Um, so if uh, you're if you're also kind of an artsy folk person uh, interested in uh, helping us out with that, um, I'd love to talk to you. Um, and uh, we can get uh, young people involved too. And so if your child likes to do art, um, we, can, we, can, we, have, we have work for them to do as well. So um, if you'd like to help out, uh, feel free to find me um, or reach me by email. Um, my email is r-e-b-e-k-k-a-h-s-c-h at gmail.com. Um, yeah, thanks, y'all. Dear members, families of Our Saviors Lutheran Church, I'm Elaine Johnson, and I'm here as your council president. And I need your help. In two weeks, on August 28th, we take a vote for our new lead pastor, which the call committee has recommended and the council has moved and approved that we take this vote for our dear pastor Martha Schwain Bardwell. <laughs> now I have to remind you we will be doing this immediately after worship on the 28th. We cannot accept the absentee ballots or proxies. We will be having Zoom. That's going to be discerned this week and will be announced in the next Sunday. And look at your update as well. So we'll make sure everyone can cast their vote in that way. Thank you. Hello, Joel Abrahamson here. Speaking of voting, and if you would like to carry forward your action with MN 350 this afternoon. Uh, if you would like to learn more about how to talk with your friends, family, neighbors about what is at stake this year, um, which who's being elected in November, if you would like to find ways to go out and contact people who may not be likely to vote this year, um, then please come to the Isaiah planning fall campaign uh, voter turnout launch on September 15th. Um, September 15th is a Thursday, so it will be either at 6 or 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. And I will be following that up with um, some plans for teams of door knocking out here in, in our 
in our neighborhoods in uh, Ward 6, which includes Phillips. So there will be uh, some opportunities to go out together on Saturday mornings. Not every Saturday morning, but about every other Saturday through the fall. Um, again, September 15th is your opportunity to learn about what Isaiah is doing to move people to the polls this fall. And I'll be around a little bit after worship if you want to uh, directly talk to me about that before I got to go pick up the kids. Thanks. I have two other things I want to mention about next weekend. So after worship next Sunday, the reparations team is leading a forum focused on our reparations budget line and a process for how we discern how to spend that budget line. And your ideas and input will be vital to that discernment, so I hope that you all can make it. And we will have a Zoom option available as well. Also, on Saturday, August 20th, this coming Saturday, there's going to be a pancake breakfast here from 9 to noon. And it's being hosted by Ray, who is Finn Sharon's fiance. And it's in honor of her family members who died Rihanna, Sean, Shiwe, and Sadie Berry. And 75% of the funds that are raised through this fundraiser will go to the Minnesota Indian Women's Resource Center, and 25% go to the Berry Family Endowment Fund. So I hope that some of you can come to enjoy pancakes and to raise money for a really good cause. And now I invite you to all rise in body or spirit as we go forth with God's blessing. The Holy One bless you and keep you. The Holy One's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Holy One look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Just listen to the first verse. Let's sing along if you know it. Why you ask me do we sing together? In the sweetness of a thousand voices, butter melts like a gladness into the soul, into the soul. Why you ask me, do we sing together? In the glory of a thousand voices, there we find what we knew not had ever been lost. We sing a vision of hope, we sing a vision of peace, we sing a vision of joy, this irresistible life, this irresistible dream, this irresistible dream, oh, this vision of hope. We sing a vision of hope, we sing a vision of peace, we sing a vision of joy, this irresistible life. 
Go in peace. Love your neighbor.